So, day 13 here in Toke, Alaska, getting ready to depart to Fairbanks for a 200 mile journey. Not a bad ride today, but I wanted to show you my accommodations last night here in Toke. Uh, the little wood stove that I've been mentioning. Yes, I really stayed in a wood stove. So evidently, there's a famous Sam McGee who did not fare well in this part of the country some hundred years ago or more. Anyway, so this is a uh, tribute to his demise. Pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Hey there, I just thought I would uh, talk about what I'm about to do here this morning on day 13. I'm gonna practice with my bear spray. The company sent me a training unit. So under duress, remember, you always revert back to training. So if you don't practice actually removing this little safety and then depressing the valve here, I may not actually be able to deploy uh, the actual bear spray in the moment I'm being eaten by an Alaskan grizzly bear or even more notably a polar bear which if you're gonna be eaten by a bear uh, I think a polar bear is what I'd want to be eaten by because it's kind of puts you into the really elite category of being killed by wildlife because not many people uh, at least are reported to be eaten by polar bears so anyway getting ready to do that on day 13 Okay, I read the instructions that came with um, my inert training unit and my bear spray. And it talked about um, when being confronted by a bear that you should make yourself larger, um, that you should be menacing, uh, that you should do things to distract. Reading the reviews, it was kind of interesting, all kidding aside, a lot of people had problems with actually activating this spray. And I can see why, because it's got a really cool um, safety right here. And you actually have to physically lift up and pull it off. And then it's got this lever here that you can depress and spray. So, you know, this, this bear spray is serious stuff. It's, I think, 10 times stronger than what uh, law enforcement uses. So you don't want this accidentally going off uh, in your car, uh, in the bag of your motorcycle, uh, whatever. So, um, so the reviews, a lot of people had problems actually activating. So I ordered the one with the training unit because, uh, my experience in, uh, public safety has taught me that you always revert back. This is not my idea, but yeah, I've lived this truth. You always revert back uh, to your level of training. So when you're in, under duress, which being attacked and eaten by a bear, I think qualifies as duress. Yeah, I, I would say so. So um, you're gonna you're gonna just revert back to whatever training you have. Well, if you haven't trained uh, pulling this safety catch off and putting your finger in it and pointing and shooting. Um, then you may not have very good results. And that's a really terrible time to have poor results. So, um, today I'm training with this on day 13, and you might ask, well, haven't you been in bear country a while? Yeah. In fact, I lost count of the amount of black bears I saw like three days ago. Um, but where I've been staying has been in the city, and so, you know, really little chance of having an issue. Um, so I decided since I'm about to embark north of Fairbanks on Monday, um, that I should practice and get good with this because for 500 miles, one direction, and then 500 miles back, uh, there are many places I could have a flat tire and be on my own to fix that tire for several hours. Um, here comes the So. So I really wanted to be protected. The reason I didn't bring a firearm uh, is simple. Uh, I have a concealed weapons permit. Um, uh, I've 
law enforcement background, I, sh I certainly am comfortable carrying a large caliber handgun like my 44 Magnum that I had custom, uh, custom made uh, years ago when I lived in Colorado. The reason I didn't carry that is because Canada. Uh, bringing a firearm like that into Canada is a no-go. Didn't want to take the risk, didn't want to mess with any potential permits and hassles. So I just thought it was not worth the risk. Um, so anyway, that's why bear spray. And, um, and what's nice about bear spray is, um, you know, you can use it on people and even in Canada and probably not have the same, the same legal ramifications. So, uh, it's really just a good all purpose, uh, problem deterrent. So anyway, enough about that. I'm going to practice here in a minute. First run of training with the bear spray. So thinking about how I would do that. So first thing is, uh, I see a threat, a bear. Hopefully it's a polar bear. Cause again, if it's going to be bad, I want it to be a polar bear. Um, and so, although if it's snowing up there, I might not see them very, anyway. Um, so first thing, see a bear, say, bear, right? So make myself big, make myself menacing, do something to distract it. Oh, this is why it's training. Shouldn't throw this for a distraction. That look tasty. This is my weapon. All right. Pull the safety, put my finger in, point. That's pretty kick ass, actually. That had a kick to it. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna try this again, but I'm gonna go in real time, real bear attack time. Back off. One arm. Did the trick. Of course. I'm sure some of you are asking, what if the bear is on top of me and, uh, you know, I didn't have time to deploy it, you know, while I'm standing. So I'm going to simulate one last time because I just have a little bit left in here of what it'd be like if I'm on the ground, the bear's kind of chewing on me and I'm able to get my pepper spray out, pull the safety off, and then protect my juggler because I think that's important and then just spray you know pray and spray right oh I'm gonna use the motorcycle as the bear
come up front. There you go. That's cool. I'm so, sure. so what do you? Saved by Texas. Gonna be the name of this, right? Right. Saved by Texas, right? What do you think of Texas now? Yeah, there you go. Alaskans love Texas. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, uh, end of the ride for uh, day 13. 13, my lips are uh, chattering because uh, it's a little bit chilly. It's about 55 degrees, been a steady rain for the past 90, 100 miles. Um, two lane highway, lots of traffic, exhausting. Uh, it's actually the hardest riding I've had yet just over any kind of distance just uh, the mental fatigue and for some reason I'm pretty soaked I think my feet are even soaked so I don't know what happened there but um, the rain is kind of a light steady rain now but it's gone from that to being very heavy the shield fogged up so I had a choice of either leaving the shield up partially and getting peppered with cold rain constantly where I could see pretty good or keeping it down and having real limited visibility and um, so I opted to keep the shield up most of the time um, and uh, just glad I made it safe got my Airbnb here so I want to go in a little more detail uh, before I grab a hot shower tonight here in Fairbanks and show you the dry bags and uh, we'll get to check out how well they've performed in this hundred mile 60 mile an hour just soaking rain getting deluged by passing 18 wheelers you know uh, the, I, I imagine that's why I'm soaked even in my boots is just that splashing wave like water um, but we're gonna check out the dry bags here in a little bit I'll open them up uh, after I get kind of showered and warmed up and uh, show you how they did but take a look anyway you can see how soaked the fabric is on these laptops in this bag here this is where the laptop is so you can Hat's okay, it's canvas. Sleeping bag and everything's in there. Anyway, everything's soaked. Okay, check out the dry bag and see how it performed. Yeah, everything's, everything's dry in here. Let's check the big bag. That's my clothes here. Oh yeah, that's dry. That one's dry. Things bone dry. Shoes, everything. Nothing's wet on the inside in here. It's all so great performance. Let me check this other. Oh yeah. Bone dry inside there, and those are all sealed up but the inside edges here just dry as a bone that's great good stuff